Well, well, South Bank Gamelan players, um, which is Javanese Gamelan, is a very high level group. And just about everybody in that group has spent time in Java and has studied there and done scholarships there and spent a lot of time playing. So they're a very high level group. And for me, that's a very nice group to play in because I don't have to run the group, so there's no pressure on me, and I can just go along and play. Um, and yeah, so I enjoy playing in that group as a player, not having to run it. Whereas Lila Cheetah is definitely my group, so I have to kind of make all the decisions about repertoire and players and positions and what we do, um, which I enjoy to a certain extent, but <laughs> um, I'd like to just, ideally, I'd like to just be free to, to concentrate on the music and have somebody else worry about rehearsals and who's available. Um, but when Leela Cheetah is really, really working, again, it, it is at a very high level, I, I feel. And again, especially as now quite a few of the players have, have been to Bali and studied there and come back, so the group is, uh, can function more on its own. As it, as it has more knowledge. Whereas in the beginning, I felt that everything had to come from me. Now, in the last few years, because we've had teachers over and, and people, are, people have more knowledge, there's more of a kind of a group. Um, so yes, people are contributing more, people know more what, what's going on. Um, so I don't feel that everything is coming from me now. I don't feel, feel that I have to know all the parts, which I did in, in, in the early days. Um, so that, that's good. And, and I think when the group is really working, it really works well. Um, especially when we went to Bali, for example, in 2006. That was just, for me, that was just the high point in everything I, I feel I've ever done artistically. That was, that was the high point. I felt like I'd been working towards that for 20 years. Could you tell us your experience working in Bali, um, rehearsing in Bali before the art festival, and also your experience performing in Bali for the art, art mm. festival? Well, performing the, the group performing in Bali, I mean, um, we'd spent 18 months rehearsing the pieces in the same positions and really kind of honing the pieces. But just the kind of 10 days or so we spent in rehearsing in Bali, the group improved, I'd say, about 30%, 50% maybe. Um, there was just that, that feeling of, of, of bonding and working as a team, not having, not having outside distractions, I think is very important. Uh, and... Uh, for a lot of the players, that was the first time they'd, they'd been to Bali and seen Gamelan in context, so that was, that was very important. Uh, and then working towards the performance, the ball, as I say, was just like, it was like winning the World Cup. It was, it was the high point of everything, really. And I thought the group was really, really good. And that, the group hasn't been at the same level since, but it's very difficult to maintain that, that level because, of course, players move on, as I was saying earlier. People move away from London. Um, and there's always new players coming in who don't know as much. Um, very quick, very quick to learn, but they don't know as much as uh, as some of the older players. But um, and you're asking about the community group the difference. Okay, the community group is is different again because it's much more um, multi-level. Let's say so. There are absolute beginners playing with people who've been playing for a few years and, and, and people in between. Um, so there, the, the, the challenge for me is to, is to accommodate everybody in one group, so that everybody's playing some part. So new players, um, I'm assessing their abilities and, and working out how far I can push them or what I can put them onto next. So they're always learning, um, keeping older players happy so they are always learning new things or, or are playing different parts. Um, so that's more of a challenge just keeping everybody together. Because again, they don't all understand how it works. Whereas with Lee Cheetah, they have much more, they have a better understanding, let's say, of, of how, how the music works. And how the group works, as well, how the group would work. But um, I'm sometimes worried about, or wary about, moving people from the community group to Lee Cheetah because it, it is quite a step up, step up I think. Um, but Lee Cheetah is always, I'm always welcoming new players with, South Bank Gamelan players, it's much more of a kind of an established group. It's very much harder for a player, a new player, a younger player, to break into that group than into Lila Cheetah, I think. How um, in terms of the group work, 
interesting when they work together as a group compared to other music groups in London. Uh, I'm just thinking about other instruments. Is it different the way they work? Um, well, I, I don't play other types of music. So, for example, I'm not, I don't play in an orchestra, so I can't really say how that works. I mean, from what I've seen of orchestras, they're very disciplined and, and all the different groups of instruments have their job and they stay separate and it's the conductor that kind of brings them all together. Whereas gamelan groups, I feel, are much more democratic. They share knowledge and, and, and work more as a social group, I think, which I think reflects Indonesian society more than Western society. Um, so I think that's very important. I think. Oh yes, definitely. They have to listen, yes, because there is, of course, there's no notation involved. Now, in, again, in Balinese gamelan, this I think is very important. There's no no notation involved. Again, sometimes when we do performances with Sapan gamelan players, because we tend to do different repertoire, we change the repertoire a lot. Often we do performances, and most of the players are looking at a piece of paper, looking at notation, and I I think this doesn't look good. So. Um, uh, for several years now, this has not happened in Lila Chita, so we make sure there's no notation. So I think this is a big difference in the two types of music. But um, orchestras, of course, they use notation. Um, and a challenge, for example, for orchestral players when they play gamelan is there's no notation. So what do they do? So they are using their ears. Um, and I think gamelan is, is perfect for getting people to, to use their ears and, 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 and listen, for developing listening skills and ensemble skills, working together as a team. Playing gamelan that would affect their daily life. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, um, I think. Well, I personally think that playing gamelan makes you a better person, of course. But I would say that. Um, I think it does. I think it makes you a, a more kind of more refined person, let's say. And and also, um, it helps you to work together in a, in a in a in a cooperative sense, working together as a team. And I've noticed that, for example, in Lili Chita and the community group, players help other players and are happy to kind of share their information and their experience. Um, and, and a lot of the players, for example, that come to Lili Chita now are music students that, I, that I've taught at, at City University or Science. Um, and I think they are grateful for the fact that they kind of they broaden their musical horizons and, and are more used to kind of um, play music in a, in a kind of, again, a cooperative sense, I think, rather than kind of a more narrow sense, like a lot of musics.